Episode of Generation Old School. If it is your first time passing by the channel, my name is William Leonard, and this is my 1950 Chevy Starline Deluxe Sports Coupe. In this video, I'm gonna be replacing the floor mats to the car, and I'm going to be showing you guys the process that I am going to to take or use, as well as the product. And I'm also gonna be showing you the type of carpet that I bought it, that I got, and where I bought it from. So if you find this video useful. Don't forget to give it a like and if it, if it is your first time passing by the channel also go ahead and click the subscribe button and well guys the floor mat that i bought for this car it's a floor mat that you need to cut and adjust to the measurements of the car so the first thing that i'm going to do is remove the front seats in order to do that you have two bolts here one here and one here same as on the other side of the uh bench seat so the first thing that i'm going to do is remove the front seat like i told you guys and then we're gonna start the removal process of the carpet. This is how the uh, floor of my 1950 Chevy looks like. To be honest with you guys, not that bad for being 70 years old. Yes, it is a little rusted, but nothing that I cannot fix with a little bit of rust oleum and sandpaper. These holes that you see here are not caused by rust. They actually, that's actually where the bench seat rests. The next thing that we're gonna do is remove the quarter panels. In order to do that, there are seven bolts that we need seven screws that we need to remove once we take those off on both sides then we can proceed to remove the carpet we want to remove the carpet in the best possible way because we're going to be using the old carpet as mock-up to uh, measure the new one that we're going to put in to make sure that it fits and that it's not going to be running out the sides <laughs> por allá suavecito oh. déjala ahí, bájala, chope This is how the floor of my 1950 Chevy looks like. To be honest with you guys, I don't think it's that bad. At least it's not running out and it doesn't have any holes. So I'm happy. The next thing we're gonna do now is sand that down. Like I mentioned, remove all the old glue and any residue that, that it has. Paint it, let it dry, and then we'll go back in with the new carpet. And something that you want to make sure is to remove all the rust and residue that you have on the floor like i mentioned before since that is going to affect the way the new carpet is going to stick and glue to the floor and the sandpaper that i'm going to be using for the floor is 3m 80 score
Well guys, we have been making some really good progress when it comes to removing the carpet, the interior, and getting everything prepped for the new carpet that is coming in. Next up, I'm gonna use rust volume stops rust. Even though the floor is not really bad, it has a little bit of rust. So I'm gonna apply this to the floor to prevent any, any future rust from spreading across the um, floor of the car. This you can get at your local Home Depot or you can also buy it online. So like I explained on the video earlier, this is called rust oleum and it's a chemical that you apply on any rusted surface or non-rusted surface to prevent any rust from building up or spreading as you guys can see it's like paint so tonight we're gonna let it dry and then we're gonna come back and apply a second layer of rust oleum so this is a project that's not gonna be finished today it's gonna take a couple of days for us to finish it well guys it's a new day today the paint from yesterday is already dry i'm really happy with the way that it came out what we're gonna do next is unbox the carpet that i bought and i bought it from a company called auto custom carpets this is an online website that sells carpets for almost all type of cars and trucks i got it in black the one that it had originally was like a grayish blue color that like i mentioned at the beginning of the video i didn't like so i'm gonna open it uh, lay it on the floor and see uh, where i have to cut the new carpet like I mentioned at the beginning is black to be honest with you guys I really like the quality and the texture of this carpet I'm very happy with uh, the purchase that I made and something that caught my attention is that this one comes with this um, path and this was something that I was about to order when when I got it and I'm I'm happy that I did it I was also going to use the old path from the old carpet but as you guys can see this one has it already in the back i'm not gonna install the carpet permanently in the car the manufacturers recommend to open it up and leave it in the sun so that it can so that you can mold it better to the interior of the car so for now we're just gonna be doing a mock-up putting it back in the box and then when i'm ready to install it then we'll leave it out in the sun for a little bit And here you have it guys. The black carpet is already laid out on the floor. And just so you guys can have an idea, this carpet, like I mentioned, doesn't come fitted for the car. You have to make some cuts and adjustments. For example, the holes for the seat, uh, you gotta drill it. But that's not a problem because something that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go underneath the car and with a drill from the bottom up, I'm gonna make some holes. Uh, over here for the clutch the, and the brakes and the, um, the gas pedal, I have to cut that way I can bring the carpet a little more up to the firewall. And um, as well as on the sides, I have to cut so that I can fit the, the panels. Uh, not a big deal, but a lot of work and we have to be very detailed when it comes to cutting and drilling because we don't want to ruin the carpet. And well guys, the brand that I'm going to be using for the um, uh, heat shield or sound deadening uh, is going to be Noico. Uh, this brand is a very well-known brand, well brand in the car industry. 
you also have Dynamite, but Dynamite is a little bit more expensive. So I decided to go with this brand called Noico. Check it out. We're gonna be laying this on the floor of the car. And with this raw, we're gonna roll it on top uh, to make sure that it glues well to the, uh, to the floor of the car. So we're gonna be doing this all across the board. We're gonna be uh, removing the back paper so that as we go gluing, we don't want to remove everything at the same time. And as we glue, we're gonna go over the uh, panels with the roller. This roller, if you don't have it, you can either buy it online or you can buy it at Home Depot for $15 like I did. As you guys can see here, I had to go around the reservoir or the brake pump since the brake pump in this course is on the floor underneath the carpet. You don't want to cover that just in case you need to do some work or you need to refill the uh, brake fluid. This is supposed to minimize the noise coming from the street, vibration as well as heat. As you guys can see, I don't have AC in this car yet. It is something that I'm planning eventually on doing because in Miami, you cannot have a car without AC, especially a black car, you will not enjoy it. So we're gonna be doing that across the board, like I mentioned, and we'll see you guys once everything is installed. So I've been working all afternoon and as you guys can see, the floor is already laid out with this um, sound reducer and vibration um, reducer. I have no idea what these panels are called, but the brand that I use is called Noico and it's very affordable. So if you guys are planning on doing this type of work, check them out. $38 is what I paid for all of this. Yes, I would have liked to lay more panels. Um, as you guys can see, I'm missing some spots like the tunnel for the um, transmission over here but it is what it is i would have also liked to put some panels over there in in the rear uh passenger but unfortunately this is what i got so the next thing that i'm going to do is lay down the carpet one more time just like i did yesterday and i'm going to start measuring and cutting this time i'm actually going to cut and i cannot make a mistake because any minor mistake is going to cost me a lot of money so there's gotta be no room for errors before i forget i will be hosting a classic car ride out to the florida keys there's a restaurant called robbie's for those of you guys that live in south florida you probably have been there and if you don't i highly suggest you guys come to this ride out with us because it's gonna be an amazing time that we're gonna be spending together we're planning on meeting at the gas station that's right at the entrance of the florida keys right when you get off from the turnpike for those of you guys that live in miami you should know what gasoline is gas station is located it's called speedway i will be putting the address right on the screen so that you guys won't get lost we're going to be meeting at the speedway gas station between 8 and 9 a.m on saturday november 14th that's the following saturday hope you get, hope to see every single one of you guys watching this video there uh, from there, from the gas station, we are all gonna be cruising together one after the other one in classic cars to Robbie's restaurant in Isla Morada. This is a really good restaurant, uh, family oriented and family owned. I highly suggest you guys come with your families. It's gonna be an amazing time that we're gonna be spending together. Um, the restaurant is right next to the water. They have really good food at a very affordable price. So I highly suggest you come and come with your family because you're gonna have a really good time. We are planning on arriving to the restaurant by 11.30 or 12 because we're going to be cruising really slow and we're going to be making stops along the way. So it's not going to be a straight shot. So if you got a classic car with an original engine like I do, no worries. It's not going to be a straight shot so the car don't suffer too much. We're going to be stopping along the way, taking pictures, eating, having a good time, talking, this and that. So come, hope to see you guys there.
guys see here, I was able, I had to cut the top part of the carpet so that it didn't mount flush to the firewall. I also had to open holes on the brake pedal as well as the clutch pedal in order to fit the carpet through it. And now the next thing that I need, that, that I need to figure out is how am I going to get the gas pedal from underneath the carpet because as you guys can see it is still hitting in there. Well guys, as you can see, I will cut everything over there so it's nice and flush as well as over here where the side panels are going to go and also on the side over here. If you guys look closely, the carpet is going inside this um, quarter panel right here. That over there, I don't need it so I'm going to get rid of it and then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Next, I'm going to glue the floor except on this side because if we remember at the beginning of the video i mentioned that the brake pump is there and that's where you fill it up from so i'm not going to be putting glue on this side right here all right guys and as you can see the carpet is on completely it has been molded so i left it here in the sun for a while so that it can get a little softened and it's easier for me to mold to the floor of the car the next thing that i'm going to do now is open the holes for the seats this is something that of course you want to do before you glue it to the to the floor of the car and all right guys so as you guys can see i'm finding the holes first and I'm leaving the screws in because I need to make sure where the screws are going to land once I glue it. Alright guys, and now it's time to finally glue the carpet in, pl in place. For that, I'm going to be using this general purpose spray adhesive that you guys can purchase at AutoZone or Home Depot or any other store that, you, that, that sells this type of sprays. We're going to start by the back, moving on to the front. We already have the holes drilled. We left the bolt in place. That way when we put in the seat belt, or well, I'm sorry, the seat, it's easier for us to find out where the holes are at instead of removing them and then trying to figure that out. But like I said, I'm gonna start by the back and then move into the front. I think it's time for us now to install the bench seats as well as the uh, side panels. First, let's do the side panels and then the seats. All right guys, it is now 5.30 p.m. and I just finished working on my car. I'm really happy the way it came out. The black carpet with the gray interior really makes the gray stands out, stand out more and that's something that I'm digging 100%. It was really worth the hard work, but here you got the result. Hard work pays off. I'm gonna go ahead and end the video. It's about 20 minutes long. If you guys are still watching, comment down below. I made it all the way to the end. That's gonna let me know who my real viewers are, my real followers. Thank you so much for watching this video. Remember that next Saturday, November 14th, we're gonna be doing a ride out, classic car ride out to Florida Keys um, at Robbie's restaurant in Isla Morada. We're gonna be meeting at the racetrack gas station that's located right at the end of the of the uh, florida's turnpike before you go into the um florida keys the gas station is called racetrack i'm going to be putting all the information down below hope to see you guys there uh we're going to be making a couple of stops 
um, in between before getting to the restaurant so that those of you that have stock cars or stock engines the engine can take a break and we can take some pictures and talk and you know um, hope you guys enjoyed this video if you did let me know with a big like and if it is your first time passing by the channel go ahead and subscribe thank you and we'll see you guys on the next one bye